and it covers three chapters, chapter 11, 12, and 13. And there's one activity for each chapter. For chapter 11, our essential question to focus on is, is Dimsdale's situation realistic and or relatable to situations that we face in our society today? This assignment is very similar to the connections assignment that we reviewed on Tuesday where we found a real life example of something in the media that related to the Scarlet Letter in general. Now we're focusing on Dimsdale's situation specifically. So you're just looking for a real life example of a situation that parallels his. The first thing you want to do is read chapter 11. If you click here, this will take you to your Spark Notes and the original text and the modern text. Always pay attention to the titles of the chapters. They are very relatable to what's actually going on and um, it's usually not until about midway through the chapter or sometimes even towards the end do you understand the meaning of the title, but they're very important. And this one is called Inside a Heart. So you're going to want to start out reading that chapter. After that, you're going to get a general idea for what Dimsdale's situation is. You're going to search the internet for an article or a video and make sure it's from a reliable source. Um, you're going to copy and paste the link below down here and then just write a very short paragraph. Um, I'm not asking for a Melcon paragraph, just a, a short written response that tells me how your source of media, your article or your video relates to Dimsdale's situation. And there is a rubric here for written responses. This will be graded on a 4321 scale. So please take a look at what a four response looks like. And that's what your goal is. If you go down to the next page, and I've just inserted page breaks between each of these, um, chapter 12's essential, whoops, sorry about that. Chapter 12's essential question is. What language does Hawthorne use that is particularly fresh, engaging, and or beautiful? So we're not focusing on the character so much for this chapter as we are the writing that Hawthorne uses. Um, so we want to look, our objective is to find words from the text that you believe are particularly engaging and or beautiful. First thing, of course, you'll do is read the chapter. And for this, you're going to need to focus on the original text. You will not be getting information from the modern text. This is only to help you understand what's going on. After you read that chapter, I want you to read this article on Hawthorne's writing style. And um, make sure you read through this and thoroughly understand what they're saying. They give great examples. And after you read that, this is what you're specifically looking for. You're looking for something in his writing that uses copious amounts of description about small details. So in other words, there's something in the reading that seems very minor, but there's a ton of description. And on this document, there are examples of what that looks like. The next thing you're going to look for is color description that's highly symbolic. So he uses red, black, white, and gray, those colors a lot. And you're going to look for in this chapter, or in any really of the chapters if you need to, um, but try to focus on chapter 12, you're going to look for how he uses color as symbolism. And you're just going to type the exact words from the text. That's it. So when you find um, a lot of description about a small detail, just type this specific text here from the novel. Same thing here, type the specific text. Moving on to chapter 13, our essential question um, and our focus here is using context clues. So I know that as you're reading these chapters, you're not understanding every word you see. There is some difficult vocabulary and you're what you want to focus on here is how can I figure out the what these words mean without going to a dictionary every time I come across a difficult word. You want to use strategies and this specific strategy is using context clues or the text that surrounds the word that you don't know. So first of all there's a video here that you can watch on Education Portal. 
about how to use context clues to construct meaning for words that you don't know the meaning of. After you watch the video, um, you're going to read chapter 13 and the link is right here. And as you come across words that you don't know, you're going to type them in these boxes. So I'm asking you to look for five words that you're not sure you know the meaning of. And in the chart, you'll type the word here. I gave you an example. The word here is edifice. The context clues are the surrounding text. So in other words, what words were around this word you didn't know that might help you understand it. Take a guess. Here's what I think it might mean. This, this would make sense to me. And then actually look it up using dictionary.com. And this website is a great website to use. It's very easy. You would just type the word in here at the top and hit search. And please use a definition that you can understand easily. A lot of times there will be several definitions that pop up. Um, also, another great thing here is if you don't know how to pronounce the word, it will pronounce the word for you, which I think is great. So you're looking for five words that you don't know the meaning of. You're looking at the surrounding text to try to figure out what they do mean. Take a guess and then actually look it up and put just a brief definition. I'm not looking for anything long. And I want a definition that helps you understand the meaning of the word.